Welcome to my painting studio. Roses are a favorite for gardeners, painters, and I hope for you too. Today I'm going to show you how to paint beautiful roses using one stroke techniques that are easy to learn. So if you've always wanted to paint beautiful roses, take a break and join me today on One Stroke Painting with Donna Dewberry. Funding for One Stroke Painting with Donna Dewberry has been provided in part by Joanne Fabrics and Crafts and Joanne ETC, serving the craft and painting needs of Americans, as well as providing painting classes and products. Experience the creativity. I love to paint all types of flowers, but roses are why I started painting. And I want to show you today's project, which is going to be lots of fun, because we're going to paint little rosebuds all the way to big, beautiful cabbage roses. And remember, you can paint on all sorts of surfaces, along with your walls and a cake pan like we're doing here. But look what we have here. We have a big cabbage rose. We can do any color that matches your decor. And then I'm going to paint big leaves with you and show you smaller leaves, how to do little curly cues that will make your piece look really nice and delicate. And we're actually going to learn how to paint everything here today in our workshop. So let's start painting. And if this is the first time you painted, or if you've painted many years before, you're going to like this technique because it's very quick and easy. Now what I've done is I've put out my acrylic paints, all water-based, vivid colors though, and I've put them out kind of away from each other on the outer edge of my palette. Pretty fancy palette, huh, this foam plate? But you know what, I like this because it doesn't absorb water and it makes it easy for me to work and I just throw it away when I'm tired. The other thing I have on here is some floating medium, and this is the fluff that's inside paint with no pigment. And I want you to use that instead of water, because we're not going to use water with my technique. Now what we're going to do is take our flat brush. Now I have a large flat brush here, and what I like to do is start big so that you can see your mistakes or see if you're getting, if you're getting the strokes. That makes it easier. Now you take this dampen brush, lay it on the paper towel, and let the excess water run off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to load the brush, which is the most important part of this technique. All right, we're going to dip two corners, and then we're going to start, like a whisk broom, going back and forth. Now see how much pressure I'm putting on that brush? That's very important. We're going to dip probably about three times. Now what I do do is go right in between here sometimes, so that when I come to get more paint, which I want you to do almost every stroke, I can just kind of go in between the two strokes. Now, I want a little bit of yellow on this brush. I'm going to come over here so we can get ready to paint. But what I want to do is I'm going to pick up, let's say, a little bit of yellow on the white edge. Work that in, maybe. And then every time I need paint, I'll dip into the corners. But the most important part is when you're loading this brush, I want you to make sure that you have it at least two-thirds full or more full of paint, okay? Which means I might want to push just a little bit more, all right? Now, let's start painting the first stroke, which makes the rose pretty easy, because this is the stroke you do most of the time through the whole rose. And that's like a seashell. I call it a fan or a seashell stroke, where it's absolutely every one of these strokes you want to look really good. And so you're going to watch this outer edge, the yellow edge here. And see this one, two, three? That's kind of how I get going on each stroke after I pick up paint. Then I'm going to wiggle. See this wiggle? I'm going to wiggle until I see my seashell, and then I'm going to slide and quit. Now that's the technique, that's the technique you want to learn, because every one of these strokes around the outer shape of this rose is going to be that stroke. Now see if I have a spot there, you might not can see that very well, but there's a spot I'm not happy with. This is the beauty of one stroke, is that you pick up more paint and restroke right over it. So there's actually no mistakes, all right? Now, you're going to keep picking up paint. This is the important part, is picking up paint each time you stroke. And you know what? I want to keep my shape really good here, so I might even dot the round area. And this will help you, too, because I want this rose to be big enough to fit all my strokes inside. Then I'm going to come out here. I can go left or right. 
Now if you're left-handed, just to, you know where I'm starting on this side and working this way, that's probably what a lefty would do. Now when I'm right-handed, most right-hand people will start on this side and work over. Just do what's real comfortable for you. You can see because I'm working on paper, I've got a dry spot there again, so look what I do. I take this brush, I dip into the floating medium, I work it in. Now I don't want you to use that floating medium more than every third to fourth stroke because that will mess up your painting. It will make it look like you used water and it'll get really muddy, okay? So there's your apron of your rose and you should be looking at this edge right here and making sure that outer edge looks pretty. Now this is an easy two strokes that we're going to do in the center. I'm going to put a line on both sides because I'm going to go from this line over to that line. So we're going to touch with the straight edge of the brush, which is the chisel edge, and we're going to go up and over, line to line. Now what we're going to do is start on the same line that you started, exactly as high as you did, stroke line to line. All right. Now we're going to come right here where this line is, and we go one, two, three, and I don't know if you're seeing how often I go in to pick up paint, but it's like almost every stroke. Now we're going to start right on this side, and we're going to do the same stroke on that side from that exact line. And actually as high as that line is where you started that stroke before too. Now I'm going to go all the way around and this gives you your second layer of petals. Okay, all the way around here. Now what we want to do is lots of times at this point you've messed up your bud in the center because you've stroked over it trying to get a really good petal in your apron. So let's go back and just clean up that rosebud. So all we're going to do is, this time I'm just going to stroke that U. See, if you're watching that yellow edge, there's a U. Now what we do at this point is fill in the middle. Now what you're going to do is stand on that line with your brush, lean the light out, and scoop across the center. All right, now that takes just a little bit of practice, but it's not too hard. You lean the light out, then you scoop up the berry wine and cross across the middle. And see what I love about my technique is that you blend shade and highlight with each stroke without working hard to get that. And the reason you do that is because we're putting pressure on the brush while we've got more than one color on the brush, okay? So there's three steps you want to remember. Loading the brush with lots of paint. Now we're going to hold our handle straight up and down. Let's do a butt up here while we're doing that. All right, hold the handle straight up and down. And now we put pressure. Now pressure is what makes your rosebud or your stroke looks good. See the pressure. And then we're going to start here, the same two lines, put pressure. And then we want to see another stroke. Now I can't see that very well, so I'm going to come here and pick up some more white and go over that stroke so I can really see those layers of that bud. Now what we're going to do here is maybe put a couple down here. Make it really fun and easy. And you know, a lot of people just start with rosebuds, and they have a whole lot of rosebuds painted around, but they're having fun doing it, and that's what's important. Now, let's do some leaves. Now, when we're doing the leaves, you're going to be surprised because it's that same fan-shaped stroke, that seashell stroke. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up yellow and white, maybe even some light green, and I'm going to work in my darker green into that brush. Now remember, two-thirds full. Now you don't want to do little strokes like this. We want to work it into the brush, into the center of the bristles, okay? Now this time I've got lots more paint than I had before, which is fine. Now what we're going to do is let's come up here, and we're going to touch our brush. Now remember, this edge right here, this tip right here is the chisel edge of the brush. So we're going to touch, lean forward, and we're going to lift as we come around. Now can you see those light bristles lifting? That's really important as we come around and we do that stroke. Now I'm going to do this to each one of my rosebuds. Let me slip in a one stroke leaf and I'll show that to you again because it's so much fun. It's real simple and I put a lot of those into my, to my work. Okay, Right here, let's do it again. We touch, lean forward, and lift as we come around. And see I like to follow around the rosebud and then in the center Watch this. We touch, lean forward, and lift immediately. Okay? Now we're going to do the rose calyx around each rosebud before we go further because we need to put these stems on up underneath our big leaves. Okay? Now what we want to do at this point is let's try a big leaf. Remembering that I come over here and pick up paint almost every stroke. More paint than you ever imagined. Look how much is on there. Now I'm going to put a V. 
and this is how we're going to do this leaf. And now I want you to watch the outer edge of this leaf as I'm painting because the outer edge is the green and we want the green to go all the way to the tip. So let's go one, two, three, and you might do four, five, six, how many you need to get that blended out nicely. And then we're going to wiggle and we're going to see our seashell, see the whole shell? And then we're going to slide to the tip. Now, as we're doing this stroke, isn't it amazing that this starts looking like a heart? See that? A nice pretty heart with a nice pretty point to the leaf. Now what a lot of people do, and I'd like to show you the mistakes because it'll help you find out like maybe what you might be doing wrong. If we put the V here and you start out here and you don't push hard enough, look how small that is. Now if you do push like you should, you're going to go one, two, three, and see how hard I'm pushing down? Then we wiggle and then, if you're not standing up straight, what's going to happen is you're going to make this funny little tip on your leaf where it's not very nice. So what you want to do is go back on this, hold the brush handle straight up and down, and it's going to be a miracle that when you lift straight, voila, there you go. Let's do it over here again. One, two, three. And let me put a little bit of pink in here. Let's put some berry wine, and I bet you'll like the color that this brings in. Look at this. There we go. Then we just pull right through that wet center. It's real important that you do that right away when you're painting. And remember that when you're doing this, let's go over this again. I want to just bring in a little bit more pink. When we're pulling our stems in, we're leading with a lighter color. We come halfway into our leaf, okay? Don't go all the way to the tip. It looks better if you don't. Now, I did a couple of turn leaves on my cake dish, so I want to show you that this is a little bit more tricky, and you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but just play around with it. And watch what happens to this brush in my hand as I'm wiggling. Now watch, I roll the brush in my fingers and I slide to the tip. Well, see, I don't like the way that turned out, so even the teacher does things she doesn't like. So let's go back real quick, pick up more paint, and remember what I said, it's really easy. If you don't like it, you just stroke right back over it. Roll the brush in your fingers. Let's do it again. In your fingers and slide. Look how easy it is to fix something you don't like, okay? We're going to come up here, and let's try a one-stroke leaf again. I did it real quick earlier, and all we do is touch, lay our bristles down, turn slightly with the green towards the tip, and lift. And then all you do is pull your stem right into that. Push, turn, lift, pull your stem in. And I use simple terminology because when I started painting, I didn't know there was any fancy terminology. And... People like my technique because I pretty much break all the rules, which that's not a bad thing if you can paint quick, right? Well, so I've gone in here and I put a few larger leaves, but let's go back in and with a number 12 flat, a smaller brush, and let's put in some other leaves here. Now what I like to do is I like to use a floating medium, like I'm cleaning out my brush in this, and I'm going to take and work in some dirty paint, say my brush was dirty with the colors that I've been painting. And I'm going to work in some floaty medium. And let's make some shadow leaves. These are really fun. I kind of scrape off the paint. And then I come over here and I start doing some little strokes. See this? Push, turn, lift. And you don't even have to make these great. And they'll look fun because when this dries, it gets light and airy looking in the background. And sometimes you can just do them pink. Look what happens. Let's come over here. Push, turn, lift. Push, turn, lift. And the important thing is listen to what I'm saying. Push. Turn slightly, then lift, all right? Because some people will take, and as painters, as they're trying to do this, they're, turn, they're pulling, and then they're turning. And you don't get the same amount of pressure there that it won't look the same, okay? Now, let me show you another rose I did actually did on the cake dish. Okay, I'm going to go back to my paint. Now, what we're doing on this rose is that we're going to put more layers, okay? I'm going to stroke this first petal, the whole apron, see this, one, two, three, all the way around. Now I went three strokes, but I need to come over and get some more paint here. One, two, three. Look how I'm going right over dark. I'm not letting anything dry in between. That's the beauty of my technique, is because I'm not using any water, you can go and stroke wet on top of wet, because it's thick, creamy paint. Remember, it's acrylic. There's no smell. That's going to be the beauty of it for many people. Look, 
I'm going to do a second layer of petals. Now instead of putting the rosebud like I did before, I'm going to come right in here and do a second layer. So I have a second skirt all the way around. I needed more yellow. You can probably see that in that first petal, okay? All the way around. And I'll put the bud more in the center of the flower, okay? And I actually even did one more layer. Let's try another layer and see. Depends on how big you make your rows. And see, I'm still using this really big brush. Do you see that? Still using that big brush. And I like you to try to make the whole rose with the same brush so it actually looks like it was painted and it doesn't look like a separate piece that's painted and added in because sometimes a si another size brush will do that. And remember, the larger the brush, the better the shading looks. Now see the difference in the layers in that brush compared to the layers in that rose. All right. Now, when I'm starting on a project, what I'd like to kind of share with you is how I did this cake dish. And it's kind of really fun. I think you're going to like that it's very simple to faux and then how I kind of add the vines on top. And so what I'd like you to try is freehand painting because that's my favorite. As I'm freehand painting, I'm realizing that I can just create what I want to, but you've got to stand back and make sure that you don't that you're not overdoing because less is better. That was very hard for me. And as a beginner painter, lots of people will go, I'm having so much fun, I'm just going to put more and more on here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a sponge and we're going to put two colors on here. I've got the white and the green on here at one time, okay? And that's how you're supposed to faux when you're faux-ing. And you're going to, that way you can get all sorts of shades in, in between the light and the white. See the light green and the white? Okay, and I faux my piece first. And you know, I usually don't let anything dry, but you would let this piece dry. And then I'm going to come in here and paint the licorice. Now, remembering that it's just kind of fun, especially on some old pieces of furniture. I love to do garage sale finds. And what I did, let me clean out this berry wine. But what I like to do is get a piece that I don't want to strip, you know? So I figured out I'm just going to fold that piece. And you don't see the imperfections. And then we're going to take the licorice here, and we're going to paint a design that maybe fits the chair or the table, okay? We're going to find an area that just kind of gives it a little curve. See this, the little black that we're going to do around here? Lots of paint. See, if you load this big brush with lots of paint, it'll cover that really good, okay? Now, I'm just going to do this much so that we can go along here and show where I would add the vine next. And usually, when I'm doing the rows and all, on a vine, I put the vine first. And then I do put the leaves after I place my rosebuds. Okay, so let me show you what we're going to do now. We're going to come here, pick up whatever colors. My palette's getting a little messy here, but people like to look at your palette. It makes you feel really artistic, okay? I'm going to come right in here. Now, ideally, you would let this dry, but I'm just going to show you at this point that I would come right around here, and I'm up at my chisel edge. And watch this. Let's do this again. See, right up on the chisel? We're leading with the lighter color, and you ever so lightly lift the lighter color so you drag those little green bristles. Now, I want this to be a little bit heavier of a branch, so I'm going to push just a little bit harder, okay, and follow all the way around my piece. Now, it picks up a little bit of black because I didn't let that dry first, but I don't worry about that because we're just trying to get an effect here. And you know what? A lot of these vines are going to be covered up with all my detail, but this helps me get a placement, okay? of where I'm going to put everything. Now I'm going to paint on my roses. And just remember, if you're not really comfortable with a rose, you can do just the, the rose buds. And they look really pretty, and people love them. And they're really pretty easy, right? Now what we're going to do is we come in here, and I put my big cabbage rose, which I'm not going to try to do because it's wet. And I come right in here and add some big leaves and some little leaves, and take it all in to the green and over into the black area. Now let's show you some curly cues. Now when I'm doing this, this is the only brush I use water with, and I want to show this to you really good here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take our script liner, and I've got a liner with long bristles. That's what you want to use, OK? Now you want to dip into water about three times. And what I'm doing is going right to that edge of that puddle. Now people ask me all the time, can they use floating medium to do this? No, you can't use floating medium because it's too thick. All right, so about three times. We're going to roll this into right up against my puddle. 
roll this into our bristles, all right, and then we're going to pull out, okay? Now, we don't want watery, and we don't want pasty, so inky's the key, all right? Pull it out. Now, I taught people, a lot of people, how to do curly cues where they never thought they could do them, and these little tendrils that we're going to put all over was like the last thing I learned how to do, and boy, I thought it was hot stuff when I learned how to do them. And let me show you how easy it is. If you put this brush in your hand like a pencil, and then you pull it straight up to this first knuckle, you're going to see how easy it is to keep it right on the tip. Because when you lean the bristles at all is when we lose that curly, you know, the, the pink coming down the tip. So I want you to put your hand on your shoulder, and I want you to move your entire arm. We're not using our wrist, and we're not using our fingers. And that's, if you do that, that's where you run into problems. And the other thing is, we don't trace on our entire pattern, if you're using a pattern. You don't trace it on, because it's very hard to follow that. But what I'd like you to practice is I'd like you to do big circles, like three big circles to the left, reverse, and two tight circles to the right. And now let's go up here and try to do this on our piece. We're not going to try. We are going to do it, OK? We're going to take our little finger, and we're going to start making a circle, OK? And so we get going, slowly lower it, and then our tip touches. And I'm going to do three big circles, reverse directions, and do a couple of little ones. Now, this is even on paper. And you can see that this will go on and on and on. And what's great about these curly cues is that they lighten up your whole entire piece. And some people are like, oh, I'm afraid to do that. But look, you can, let's find a place here. You can even do it like this. OK? Until you feel more comfortable. But if you t I tell you to take water in a glass and sit there and just practice that, OK? Now, what was really important that we learned? We learned the seashell stroke. Let's do that one more time. This seashell stroke is exactly what made that entire rose. Look at this. One, two, three. Wiggle. Now, where are your eyes looking? I want your eyes looking at the outer green edge of that leaf. All right, same thing with your rose. Look at all the light edges of the rose. When you're all done, you don't see what it looked like in the middle. And that's what a lot of people concentrate on. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to look at these outer edges. See all the light edges? That's what makes our design when we're all done. So we're going to watch the screen, follow it all up, and then slide to the tip, knowing that the green's going to go to the tip of the leaf. Then we're going to come right in here. One, two, three, wiggle. Now stand the brush up. Now there's always going to be one side that's harder for you to stroke than the other side, and that's normal. But remember, I'm standing straight up here and doing this because I've painted on a lot of walls. Now if you're just beginning, don't feel bad about taking your project and turning it around in your hand because that's OK too. And you know what? I don't stand at home and paint at my easel like this. I sit at my dining room table where I've sit for 20 years, and I put my little project right in front of me, and I move it around, and I paint right there at my table. And that's where I paint best, right at home, not in front of the TV set. But you know what? I have fun doing it, and I think you will too. And I want to go back and look at our piece and kind of show you a little bit more about this design that I think you're going to really like, is that I took this little cake dish, which I love to hit the yard sales and find an old cake dish or, you know, those bread tins that are really nice. But I took this one, and I took a candlestick that, ha that holds the taper, the pillar candles. And then I took and spray painted a tray. These trays you can get at the dollar store even with Christmas or something on them. Well, I sprayed it, and then I put my cake dish on top of it. Now, I've even used a hat box, one of those wooden hat boxes there, which are really fun. And then I sponge the whole outside of this, remember, with the light green and the white or whatever color matches your house, paint it in my black, let it all dry, and then I just went for it. Remember, the vines first, then the roses, and then you go in and fill it up with green. All right? Lots of fun remembering that you've got to take care of your brushes so that as you're working, getting ready for your next projects and practicing, that you'll have lots of time to, to paint if you have good brushes to work with, OK? Now, I hope you've enjoyed painting with me today. And what we're going to do now is I want to show you, now that you've been painting in my workshop, how fun it is if you have more tips to help you. Today's letter comes from Beth in Chalice, Idaho. 
Beth writes and says she's a traditional decorative painter who has been painting eight hours a day getting ready for her local craft fairs. She eventually had to stop painting completely because of problems that developed with her wrists. Then one day she saw me on TV doing a painting demonstration and decided to try the one stroke technique. It was so much faster that she was able to start painting again. Now she has a profitable business and writes, I'm just happy that one stroke gave me back something I loved, painting. And I'm glad too, Beth. And I love hearing your stories. Thank you for sharing yours. And I want to hear all from all of you guys out there. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed my workshop today and that you make it a date to join me next time when I'll teach you just how easy it is to paint small and pretty details on candles. We'll be painting daisies, hydrangeas, and lots more. So I'll see you next time. Looking for more information about One Stroke Painting or today's projects? Why not visit us on the web at www.onestroketv.com. Donna Dewberry's Just Roses workbook and today's project supply kit are available for $29.95 plus shipping and handling. To order your Just Roses kit, call 1-888-332-HOME or go to www.onestroketv.com. Funding for One Stroke Painting with Donna Dewberry has been provided in part by Joanne Fabrics and Crafts and Joanne ETC, serving the craft and painting needs of Americans, as well as providing painting classes and products. Experience the creativity.